All right, blessings, blessings. Welcome back to Congregation Rehoboth. This is Tuesday night teaching TNT, where we take every single false doctrine, every single um, false teaching, and we blow it up and we throw it into the theological trash can. And that's what we do. We seek the truth. We seek the truth in love, and we we not only seek the truth, but we live uh, the truth. And so we're grateful uh, to Abba Yah for this opportunity to share in the word of Yah tonight. And so I'm looking forward tonight to sharing with you um, what Abba Yah has shared with me. And <clears throat> we're going to we're going to continue tonight. All right. So <clears throat> if you're with me tonight and you're tuning in, um, if you can turn with me, hope you have your Bibles and you're able to, you know, write down. You should have something to write with. All right. You should have something to write with. And I know I'm in the comfort of my own mm -hmm. home. And, but I let me tell you, man, there's no place that I go that I don't have anything to write with. Whenever the word of Yah is going forth, we should be prepared. I have over here my notebooks. And see, this is the sign of real students. You know, you got to have a studious mentality when you come to the word of Yah. You got to have your notebooks, although I'm not using my notebook tonight because <clears throat> I'm not teaching. I mean, I'm not, I'm, the, I'm teaching. And so um, I want to encourage you, man, to, and those of you, those of you out there who have gone to school, middle school, high school, um, you, you know what it means to study. You, you know exactly what it means to study. And it's more than just getting a grade for some of us. Um, and so I want to encourage you that if you don't take notes, if you're not interested in note taking, you're missing out on a lot. And so all we can do is encourage and ask that you would not just take notes too, but then go back and study. There, there should be a lifestyle of studying the word. That you should be um, constantly looking to improve, constantly looking to search, constantly just fiending for the word of Yah. Like it's dope, like it's like it's heroin, like it's oxycotton, like it's like you just can't live without it. You have to have that kind of hunger and thirst and desire for the word of Yah. And I pray that every single person. Um, who's listening, who's tuning in, would have that um, desire. Um, um. And so blessings. blessings. All right. So if you can turn with me to 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. We're going to go ahead and get started tonight. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Don't forget, if you can just go ahead and go to Congregation Rehoboth and go to Henry Ben's. Um, Junior on Facebook. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now as well. And I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to like my own video. I sure am. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. And let's see here if I can get into this page. There we go. Yep. So I'm going to like it and then I'm going to share it on. Yep, there we go. So if you can go ahead and do that for me, um, be a blessing. Um, we're definitely um, looking forward to the word of Yah tonight. All right. So um, 1 Timothy chapter 6, 1 Timothy chapter 6. I'm going to share it in one more place. Um, oh, yes. All right. And we're going to start in verse number six. So first Timothy chapter six and verse number six. All right. The word of Yah reads. Actually, let me share just in case you're not able to. You may be driving or you may um, not have your Bible with you. Put your able to look on. So I'm going to share my screen here. So we're in 1 Timothy chapter 6, and we're going to start in verse 6. All right. The word of Yah reads, 
But godliness with contentment is great gain. I want y'all to understand what, what Paul is, is teaching here. Um, so, you know, I really should start in verse one to give us a real clear understanding. Now, he, these are instructions to ministers. Now, some of us have been trained in Baptist churches or non-denominational churches that um, will say, oh, the ministers are the ones that preach or, or the ministers are the ones that sit in the pulpit. No, that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that a minister is a servant of Yah. That's actually what the word means. Servant is, he says, let as many servants. So he's saying that those of us who um, are servants to Yah, um, it's the word diakonos. And he's saying that he, those of you who are believers, you are a minister. As a matter of fact, he's given each and every one of us a ministry by way of salvation. For the simple fact that we're saved, he says, now you are a minister of reconciliation. Yes. And so you, you, you can't say, well, that's the preachers. They should know the word like that. They should be the ones that know. No, 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 no. Let's be biblical in our understanding is... And, and the understanding that we should have is that you are a minister, a servant of Yah with a ministry, number one, of being a reconciler, that you have the ministry of reconciliation, meaning this, that you need that that each and every one of us needs to have the word of Yah in us to the point where we can minister to someone who's a non-believer and be able to watch this as First Peter 3.15 says, Always be ready to give an answer for the hope that's in us. Yeah, that's part of your ministry as a believer. And so he says, let as many, verse one, let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor that the name of Yah and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise or teach something different and consent not to the wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach and to the doctrine, which is according to godliness, he is proud knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of words. Now, that doesn't mean this scripture is not saying that you shouldn't ask questions. No, it's ridiculous. He's saying here that your questions should not be so um, unrighteous or from a, a motive that seeks to cause strife. All right. About questions and strifes of words, whereas cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings. Verse five, perverse dispute, disputing or uh, disputings of men of corrupt minds. And so that's very interesting. Men of corrupt minds. And so what will be interesting to find out, I'm not actually in this verse, but we're going to get to this corrupt mind set in just a moment and destitute of the truth. And see, here it is. Your mind is, con your mind is corrupt because it is destitute. In other words, it is empty of the truth. You think you know the truth. You're not sure, but, but we know that the Ruach, see, if you're, if you're wondering, do I have the truth or is this true? And you can't discern the truth. Let me tell you something. The scripture says that the Ruach, one of the evidences that you have the Ruach, is that he will lead and guide you into what? Into all truth. And so you can't say that you are even a believer if you don't even know what the truth is. Blessings. He says, men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing this is what they think in their mind. They don't have the truth. And this is what they think. They think or suppose 
that gain or, or material blessings and material wealth is godliness. No. He says, from such, withdraw yourself. In other words, you need to bounce. You need to dip. If you're in a congregation where the pastor or the teachers or whoever the leaders are, the ministers, if they are um, more concerned with wealth and great gain more than godliness, or they equate godliness to what they have. So you can, in other words, this is, these are the kinds of things they will say. Well, you can see my faith right out in the parking lot. Okay, when they have all these nice cars, you can see my faith when you come to my home. No, he says, supposing that gain is godliness from such drug withdraw yourself. Now, here's the verse that I want to talk about tonight that we're going to be in verses six through nine. It says, but godliness without contentment. I'm sorry, godliness with contentment is great gain. So he corrects. He flips the script. Paul flips the script and says, wait a minute. Godliness with contentment is great gain. And I'm going to share something about contentment. Because you remember what Paul said, right? You remember what he said in uh, Philippians chapter four? He says, uh, not that I speak in respect of one, but Paul says, I have learned to be what? In whatsoever state I'm in, to be content. See, that's one thing that we're not in this day and in, in this age. We're not content with what we have. We're all, we're seeking the bag. We're we we put more energy. Come on and go with me here to seeking a bag than we do seeking the kingdom of Yah. Many of us do that, and so he says. He said, Paul says, I know how to be abased. I know how to live and be a praiser of Yah even when I don't have anything. And he says, I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and suffer need. See, there's something there, there's something that happens with people. I shouldn't say people, but with believers when when we struggle. There, there's something that that we can see it on their face. We can see it in their praise. We can see it in their commitment to continue to show up to uh, the congregation when they're going through something that, you know, the enemy wants to allow you to feel that you're right for pulling back. Oh, no, 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 no. You can't even provoke. You can't even be obedient. If you if you stop coming to lift your brother, to lift your sister up, he says, I can do all things through Yeshua. Hamashiach. All right. But then he says. Um, in verse seven. For we brought nothing into this world. And he, he says, it's for sure, it's for certain that we'll carry nothing out. And having food and raiment or clothing, he says, let us, let us be there with content. In other words, why aren't we content with having food and clothing? What is it about us that says we, we, we have to seek after? And now, now I'm going to deal with what, what actually is food. And that's a good question. What actually is food? What is considered food? Um, and so we're going to deal with that. Not tonight, but we will deal. We will be dealing with this. Here's the verse we're going to deal with tonight. Verse nine. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drawn men in destruction and perdition. Now, there's a lot of general statements here. He's not listing anything specific. He simply says many foolish and hurtful lusts. Draw men in destruction and perdition. All right. And so we're going to deal tonight, guys, <clears throat> with our series. We're going to continue um, to deal in our series tonight called uh, Corruption in the Medical Field. And I want to say this because it does, this verse is relevant to any area of life, whether you're in the medical field, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a, a business owner, whether you are a pastor. Uh, whether you're a student, it applies to every individual. 
in very, I, listen, I don't care what vocation you're in, it applies to every single individual because he says this, he says in, in verse seven, I'm sorry, verse eight, and having food and raiment, let us be there with content. If you are not content, this applies to you. If in your mind, I'm going to deal with this, in your mind, in your heart, you may have some people fooled, but you're really greedy for great gain. He says, this is for you. Um, verse nine, I want to deal with this part here, this first part where he says, they that will be rich. I just want to deal with those five words. They that will be rich. Now, last week, and so, then, so tonight, I'm getting ahead of myself. Tonight, we're dealing with part four of the series. It's called Medicine Men. Medicine Men. You remember we started the series talking about, we're talking, we were talking about the woman with the issue of blood and how she went to these doctors, these physicians, and they took all her money. All right. And it wasn't until she went to Yeshua HaMashiach and turned to him. You know, there are people who they will... <clears throat> They'll seek everybody else except Yeshua. They'll turn to everyone else except turning to Yeshua first. And so we got to flip that. We, we've got to get the order correct and understand that really physicians and doctors, they, they, they bow or they come in second or their, their um, knowledge comes from Yah anyway. The knowledge that they have about the human body, guess what? Yah created the human body. And so we, we, we've got to understand that we got to go to him first. And when, we, when I say go to him, yes, we're talking about prayer, but we're going to, we're, we're talking about more than just prayer. We're talking about going to the word of Yah. And that's what's something that we, many of us fail to do in these times. And so we're talking about medicine, men. We're in part four. And so last week, um, we continue in our series as we are tonight. And we we looked at um, corruption in the medical field and we looked at the overt. The overtly corrupt practices. Um, of men, of women in the medical field, seeking what? Seeking to be rich. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whenever whenever you talk about. The medical field, and we know today, guys, that, you know, these pharmaceutical companies, they're not in business to lose money. And a more important thing, they're not in business to, to help you. See, that's one thing we got to understand, that we can't put our trust in the medical field because they're not, their intention is not to help you. Now, let me let me give them credit. If you've been shot or injured, you've broken a bone or something like that. They do awesome work in those areas. In the emergency room, they do awesome work. But I'm not talking about the emergency room. I'm talking about when we're suffering from disease, when we're suffering from uh, ongoing illnesses by our own fault many times because of the things that we ingest and put in our bodies. All right. We got to understand that. Their approach is a business model. And we got to understand that this business model does not in include your well-being. And so we, we, we got to understand that. And so I want to I want to be clear about the intentions of those that are in the medical field when they're prescribing medications, when they're giving diagnosis, when they're giving prognosis, when they're when they're in their their business mode, their job is not to help you heal. OK, it is to manage your sickness and disease. All right. And, 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 and a byproduct of them managing our sicknesses and diseases is that they get rich, is that they get paid. The more medications you they give, the more you buy. The more you buy, the richer they get. And so we got to understand this business model in the medical field. And this is why it is corrupt. 
All right. And I want to I want to I want to give you an example of a prime example. Did you guys know that in 1935, vitamin C became the first vitamin to be artificially synthesized, created and sold in Switzerland, 1935. Now, why would they create vitamin C to be sold? When you can, when you can plant a tree, come on and go with me here, when you can have a garden and get it for free. Well, the obvious answer is to make money. It's to make money. And so despite the natural creation that Yah has given us in citrus fruits that contain vitamin C, for example, grapefruit. I don't like grapefruit, but grapefruit has vitamin C. Mandarins have vitamin C, limes, and bell peppers also. Listen, all of the things that Yah has created, vitamin C is naturally occurring in those things. And so we didn't grow up. We didn't grow up with, with all these different kinds of citrus fruits and vegetables that contain all of the vital nutrients that our bodies need. And so because of that, we turn to the medicine men who are only interested in not our healing, but they're interested in ungodly gain. They're interested in becoming rich and selling you a product that you can get for free. Now, we're going to go deep into this, guys. I hope you're ready tonight to really take your notes. Um, you should have, by the way, the first note you should have is that in 1935, vitamin C was synthesized and sold in Switzerland. That's one of your first notes you should have. That's one of the first notes that you should have. All right. And again, how does this relate to the scripture? Well, because he says this, they that will be rich, they fall into many temptations. Well, what are the temptations that medicine men or doctors or physicians can fall into? Well, one of the things they can fall, one of the temptations that they can fall into is deception. They are deceiving. Yeah, that, that's a temptation to deceive people who need help. That's a temptation. Why are they why are they falling into this temptation? Because they have to deceive you and they have to watch this. They have to lie to you in order for you to believe that you need their medication. Are you all with me? Yes. And so we, we can see that that is a temptation. Um, many people lie. Many people are tempted to lie in order to have gain. I remember, I remember being a young kid. I remember this. I remember on tax when tax season comes, claiming other folk kids. Now, who's doing that? Why are they deceiving the government? Well, it is because they desire to get paid, to have money. All right. And so we, we got to understand that these temptations to be rich. I'm sorry, these temptations will come when we desire to be rich. And watch this, when we are not, when we have not learned to be content with what we have. Oh, yes. Now I'm going to keep pushing. Now, you got to remember, last week I also shared that John D. Rockefeller, who remembers what I shared about John D. Rockefeller last week with the medications? Can someone... Uh, chime in on that. Who remembers what we learned last week? He pretty much infiltrated um, uh, medical facilities and started selling pharmaceuticals. Absolutely. Does any? Uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. He started selling uh, uh, pharmaceuticals, but what was he including in those pharmaceuticals? oil absolutely did you guys know that that the medications that you take today if you are on medication they are created with oil i don't know if you knew that but we learned that last week and i and, and we showed and proved it 
we didn't I didn't just say it and make a claim. We showed and proved it last week. And I'm going to show you again tonight. This is Rockefeller right here. He was an oil tycoon, John D. Rockefeller, founder of Standard Oil, was looking for ways to make greater profits again, trying to be rich. He approached the drug companies and made them an offer, which went something like this. If you can make drugs from my oil, I will fund medical schools, textbooks, medical libraries, hospitals, and medical conferences. And he did. He bought up every single medical school, every single hospital he consolidated. Um, and here's the article right here, if you want to read it. The article is right here, how Rockefeller created um, the business of Western medicine. Yeah, you see that? How he created the business of Western medicine. All right. And so we, we got to understand that we're living in a time, and this happened in 1910. This wasn't always like that. It happened in a, with our great grandparents. Why did they live so long? Why didn't they, why didn't they have all these childhood diseases? Because there were no corrupt. Well, I shouldn't say there were no corrupt, but the medical field wasn't as corrupt as it is today. So Rockefeller was corrupt enough to see this as a big opportunity with the possibility that vitamins and medications could be developed from petroleum. I want you to understand what we're dealing with. He saw the chance to control and monopolize multiple industries at one time. Petroleum was one. Chemicals and medicines. So next week, when I come back and ask you, what were the three industries that John D. Rockefeller controlled? You should have these notes in. You should know this. Why is that important for me to know? Because you're going to go to the doctor and they're going to convince you to take medication. That you can naturally, watch this, that you can completely avoid if you change your diet. Yeah. You could completely avoid having to take these medications if you change your diet. Now, some of you may be thinking, oh, you just saying that. No, I've been taking off of four medications already to this date. Why? Because I changed my diet. I love, listen, I loved the truth and I love the word and I love y'all enough to believe that our original design was for us to eat fruit and, and watch this. Now that I've been doing this for almost three months, I can see the truth. That I don't need to take certain medications. I don't need to take a vitamin C pill that has petroleum in it when I can just go outside or go to the store and buy tin or grow my own in my house or grow my own in my backyard. I don't need to do that. And so we got to understand that these men are corrupt. And of course, petrochemicals were ideal from a business perspective. And that's exactly what, when you mix petroleum and chemicals together, petrochemicals were ideal from a business perspective because they could be patented, patented, owned, and sold for great gain to get filthy rich. So let's get into this. Let's get into this, y'all. Well, what does it mean when a person wants to be rich? They that will be rich. Well, this word uh, will be, let's just deal with will be. Those of you who want to be, or you know people who want to be or will be rich, they will themselves to be rich. They they, every opportunity they're looking to, to get paid, to, to, to have profit and gain and not be content with what they have. Let, let, let's look at this word and deal with it. The word for will be is below menoi. Below menoi, this word right here. Below menoi. 
All right. It's in the present tense. That means that there are people right now that are not content with serving Yah unless they're getting, unless they're on the path of getting rich, unless they're on the path of getting the bag, unless they're on the path of gaining more and more. That's their whole focus. It's not ministry. And even if it is ministry, it's to find out who can I convince to either work with me to help me get rich or I could use them as and I can see them as a customer to help me to get rich. All right. There are people in the church that are networking and 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 that's how they see churches. They look at them as opportunities to get rich. And look, this word will be. It simply means to deliberately do this. It's, it's something that you deliberately do. It's 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 purposed in your heart. It's purposed in your mind to do this. It, it, it actually means to have a purpose of doing that. That's your that's your whole. No wonder why relationships are not working out. No wonder why ministry is not working out. Let me let me ask you guys a question. What 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 would you give in exchange for your soul? What when? The, the scripture tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of Yah and his righteousness. And he says all these things that, that many people work overtime, double shifts, losing sleep. He says all of those things, if you seek the kingdom first, he said, I'll just give them to you. He says, you don't even have to focus your prayer on these things. He says, I will give you, watch this. What you need. Now, when he gives us what he what we need is not for our own pleasure. Mm -mm. It's for the kingdom. It's to build the kingdom. So he says there are people who have in their minds that all of their affections, their desire is to have abundance. And all they care about, watch this, they don't care about the inside. They just care about the outward possessions. Things that's going to make them look like they got it going on. Things are going to make them look. And, and really, they think that they're going to be respected more because of that. But rich, let's look at the word rich. So we dealt with will be. They have a purpose in their hearts. What's your purpose? What's your purpose? Is your purpose to seek the kingdom? Now, what does that look like? What does it look like when you when you can say, you know what? I can see that they're seeking the kingdom. You know what it looks like? When you seek the kingdom, you're involved in ministry. Oh, yes. He says that the ministry you should be involved in, number one, is reconciling the world, helping to reconcile the world back to Yeshua HaMashiach. That's why he tells us, go ye therefore. When was the last time you witnessed the gospel to someone that's not in your family? That you went there for, that you went out as you were going about, you shared the gospel with them. Or, or even better yet, you were equipping yourself to share the gospel. When was the last time? You got to consider these things because these are the kinds of things that those who are servants of the Most High, that those who are seeking the kingdom, it's just what we do. It's just what we do. And so you got you to question yourself and say, wait a minute. What am I really seeking? So the word belominoi, that, that we will be, it's, it's, it's in their minds, it's in their heart, their affections. They seek outward possessions only. That's all their minds are on. But he says, what is their mind on? Their minds are on being rich. And so this word here, this word for being rich is right here. Oops. It's right here. All right. Plautain. Plautain in the Greek is also in the present active. It, watch this, guys. Plautain simply means that you want more and more and more. In other words, you're never content with what you have. You never sit up and say, you know what? I have everything I need. I have everything I need. That many people are continuously seeking to have more and more and more. You know what that does? 
it takes you away from his kingdom. If you're seeking this just to have the outward possessions. All right, let's go to Proverbs because I want to share something with you in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 12. And we're going to go to verse 20. Proverbs 12. And we're going to go to verse 20 here. Because I want to show you this. I want to, I want you to look at this. Well, there it is right there. Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil. But to the counselor, the counselors of peace is joy. Now watch this, deceit. Remember we talked about that? They have to deceive you. They're being tempted to deceive. He says, deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil. Listen, man, listen, guys. When you can create a product that should help people, but it doesn't because, as we said, this, this medical field is creating medicines from petroleum. That's imagining evil. And I, I want you to see why, why this is not a godly pursuit. And listen, you should be doing everything you can not to even have to go to the doctor. You know, many of the things that, in other words, why would you go to someone who's, who has lying lips? Why would you go to someone who's going to deceive you? Now, you don't you you think the medications are going to help you. You think that they're going to help you get back to health. They're only managing your sickness. They're only managing your dis-ease. True healing is found in eating right. True healing and the prevention of disease is found in eating the right foods. We we I've discussed with you the kinds of um, sicknesses and the kinds of diseases and, and ailments and conditions that come from eating meat. We've already been over that. Now, you can make your own choice. You could, you could choose to do what you decide to do. However, we got to make better choices. If we know that there are certain foods that are going to kill you, if we know that there are certain foods that are going to give you disease and sicknesses, we got to say, wait a minute. Why, why am I trying to destroy? Why am I helping the enemy destroy my temple? And then when I get sick because of what I've been eating, I turn around and I go see the people who are trying to deceive me anyway. I've already told you guys that I've been lied to by two pharmacists. Oh, yes. And I did my own clinical trial. And found out that I don't need to take certain medications, at least four of them already. Why? Because they're already naturally occurring in the fruit and vegetables that are mostly fruit that I've been eating. Absolutely. For example, vitamin D. And I share with you, vitamin D is not actually a vitamin. It's a hormone that we get from the sun. Yeah, it's a hormone that we get from the sun. Um, vitamin C, I've already shared with you. I, I'm off that. Why do I need to take that when my vitamin C comes from fruit and some vegetables? And many of us, many of us are deceived by these individuals who think, who we think they're there to help us. Now, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 20, it says, deceit is in the heart. Now, now watch this, of them that imagine evil. I want to deal with that word imagine because it's the same Greek word as will be or bulomenoi, to purpose, to cut out, to plow, to engrave, to devise. But watch this, it's in privacy to have these desires, these affections, to, this focus. But watch this. It's in privacy and secrecy. In other words, nobody knows that this is what you're seeking after. But guess who knows? Yah knows. 
Now watch what Revelation 18 and 3 says. You can see it right here on my screen. I'll show you. Watch what he says this. Revelation 18 and 3. For all nations have drunk off the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants, the merchants, those that sell you things, those that sell you drugs, those that sell you medication, the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. All right? And so you got to understand that there are merchants, that there are people who are only interested in you buying and them selling you things that are going to make them filthy rich. All right. And they do that through deception. And this is what this, this wine, they have, they're drunk off the wine of the wrath of her fornication. In other words, these people are not serving y'all. They're, they're cheating. They're, they're committing fornication with other gods. In other words, when you seek to be rich, you have now made riches your God. This is why you got to be content. This is why you have to be content with what you have. Now, does that mean you shouldn't go to school? No, you should go to school. But you cannot put riches above Yah. That's what he's saying. That's what Paul is saying here. Paul is saying that, you, you know, you can't make money your God, being rich your God, or else you're going to be deceived. All right. Now, let me get back into something here. Because we, we talked about Rockefeller, and I want to I apply this now. We talked about Rockefeller. And again, those that desire to be rich, we're, we're, we're going to hit on, we're going to hit on the collateral damage that happens as a result of this desire to be rich. See, you may not be desiring to be rich, but because you, you have trusted in these corrupt physicians, you believe everything they tell you. Well, the doctor said, I need to take this. I need to take that. No, you don't. You need to stop. You need to change what you're eating. I guarantee you, if you start, if you go into that doctor's office, see, listen, guys, you can't even do your purpose in Yah if you're sitting up in a hospital bed. How are you gonna how are you gonna fulfill your calling? When you're laid up in the hospital bed because of the things that you've been eating, that you don't even feel like doing ministry because you, your stomach and, and your, 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 your bodily functions are not working. You can't be effective in ministry and, and, and you're sitting in the hospital because of what we're eating. No, that's impossible. And so what will happen is they will end up deceiving you and you're, you, you get caught up. In their snares and temptations. Yeah, you become collateral damage because you, you trust in what they're saying. No, you got to take back your health. You know your body better than anyone. Listen, you, you can listen, man. I'm telling you guys. And you don't have to believe me. I'm going to show it and prove it right now. And so I want to go back to Rockefeller. Because remember what we said about him was that he he had these three industries that he was in: petroleum, chemicals, and medicine. Medicine. But see, here was the problem: the Rockefeller's plan. When he was doing this in 1910, there were still natural and herbal medicines based on plants and eating fruits and vegetables. There was, listen, in 1910, before Rockefeller took over the medical industry, do you know what kind of medical Medicare, uh, not Medicare, but do you know what kind of medicine was being practiced? Holistic medicine. Those, those were half of the, med of the hospitals were holistic hospitals. Again, where they used 
uh, herbal remedies, fruits. They, they, they suggested that you eat fruits to heal. It was very popular in the 1900s when our great grandparents and great great grandparents were living. Here it is right here. Almost one half of medical colleges and doctors in America were practicing holistic med medicine using extensive knowledge from Europe and Native American traditions. Rockefeller knew that to get total control of the medical industry so that he could do what? He could be rich. He would have to get rid of his competition. All right. So this is a little history also behind people who want to get rich in the medical field. Which watch this. If we don't change our eating, we're going to be interacting with the with the hospitals. We're going to we're going to have to go to the hospital and we're going to have to take their medicine because we refuse. And guess what? Let me tell you this. They don't even believe that we have the discipline enough to eat right. And what I mean by eat right is eat according to what the scripture teaches is our original diet. We, we, they don't even believe. Listen, they know. They know that fruit and vegetables, mainly fruit, but they know that this is the remedy, but they don't even believe that you'll take the courage and have the courage to say, you know what? I'm going to stop eating fast food. And this is how they're making their money. This is how they're getting rich off of us because we refuse to change our diet. So Rockefeller said, I got to get rid of these holistic hospitals and I got to take total control of the medical industry and get rid of this competition. So guess what he did? Guess what Rockefeller's first move was? He took all his wealth from oil to purchase part of a German pharmaceutical company. Did y'all know this? Called IG Farben. You know, look, look this up. It's, it's out there. All this information is out there for you to for you to find out. So he took some of his wealth from oil and he bought and purchased part of this company called IG Farben. Now, IG Farben's products included synthetic dyes, nitrile. You can look all this up. Rubber, polyurethane. Some of you guys know what polyurethane is. Um, Prontosol, Prontosil, sorry, and chloroquine. Now, watch this. IG Farben, they also created the nerve gas or the nerve agent called sarin. Oh, y'all ain't ready for this. I hope y'all taking notes on this. And sarin was first discovered by IG Farben. Watch this. And guess when they used it? <coughs> they used sarin gas to help them create Zyklon, Zyklon B. Now, does anyone know what Zyklon B is used for? And again, this is all to get rich. What is Zycon B? Does anyone know what, is, what it's used for? Or what it was used for, I should say? Anybody? It was used in the European Holocaust. Yeah, it, it was used there. Now watch this. There are companies in the US that are owned by this German pharmaceutical company called IG Farben. Guess who that is? Has anyone ever taken these two medications for a headache? Or pain, pain reliever, Aleve, and bear aspirin. Anyone ever take those? Well, guess who designed those? IG Farben, the German pharmaceutical pharmaceutical company that gas that used the gas chambers 
in World War II. And let's go a little deeper. Again, we're talking about getting rich. We're talking about these corrupt medicine men that we're going to go to or that we're interacting with right now and we're buying their products when we don't have to be. In, 18, in 1898, Bayer began selling a new medicine. Do you know they began to sell heroin? Do you guys know that? They promoted it as a cough and a cold. Um, now, for those of you who, who take cough syrup, I'm going to ask you this. See, we don't, we don't really, and I used, to, I used to believe this. I don't believe it no more because of my current interactions with, with the hospitals, with all of these people. Let me tell you. Once those, pharma those, those um, pharmacists lied to me, and then the two classes I'm taking, the chemistry and the um, medical term class, which is dealing with all the different systems in the body, let me tell you, I've learned a few things. Listen, you should never buy a cough syrup ever again. Why? Because your body is smart. Your body is smart. And when your body is coughing, it's trying to expectorate. It's, they're trying, your body is trying to get rid of something in your, your body that doesn't belong there. So why do you take a medicine that's going to suppress the cough? Does that make sense? That makes absolutely no sense, right? When, you, when, when you're coughing, your body is smart enough and it's, it's, it's happening automatically. It's saying, I need to get something out of my body. What do we do? We ignorantly go and take medicine to stop the cough. Mm -mm. Watch this. They were using heroin for children up until 1912. In the early 70s, Bayer, Bayer's fungicide, now watch this, guys, Beethoven, and its, its name is also diethylprocarbonate. You guys see that? Diethylprocarbonate was used as a preservative, are y'all listening, for wine, beer, and fruit juices. Are y'all listening? Bear's fungicide, it was a fungus that preserved, you can look all this up. This fungus was used as a preservative to preserve beer, wine, and fruit juices all the way up until 1972 when the FDA banned it. And watch this. Beethoven was found to produce potent carcinogen urethane. It was cancerous. Now watch this, though. They're smart. They said, okay, since the FDA is going to ban it, Watch this, guys. They came up with a different chemical called, watch this, dieth diethyl procarbonate. Now, this was what they used, but they came up with a different one called ether. All right. And if you take this dye, look at this. Dye means two, right? And then look at that. You see that word? You see how they, and they created this new chemical called ether 2, ether 2O, which is basically a modification of diethyl pyrocarbonate. Do you guys see that? So ether two oxygen, the oxygen atom is linked to two ethyl groups. And do you know what it was used for? What it's used for even today? This ether two, oh, anesthesia in surgery. Ether is also used uh, with petrol as motor fuel. <laughs> I hope y'all hearing this. See, this is, this is, see all of these things, watch this. But it's also in our household products as well. In your glass cleaners, 
carpet cleaners, floor cleaners, oven cleaners. They also, watch this, they are absorbed as volatile fumes from the air by the skin. Our skin absorbs this, this potent chemical. I hope y'all watching. I hope y'all listening to this. So if you got, listen, if you got glass cleaner, carpet cleaners, floor cleaners, oven cleaners that you're currently using, you need to throw that stuff out. If it contains this, if it's not natural, if it contains ether 2 O, you need to throw it out because the fumes, they're called silent killers because the fumes, watch this, from the air, we absorb those things through our skin and as well as we inhalate them through inhalation. Look, let me tell you. So ether too, oh, guess what else is in? It's also in fruit-based foods and beverages. You got to check your labels for ether too, oh. It's also in desserts, fruit jams, yogurt, ice cream, chewing gum, soups and broths, pre-made soups and broth, seasonings that you don't make, that you buy in a packet. You know all that stuff on the back of a seasoning packet you can't read? You should start looking that up. Snacks, sauces, pre-made sauces. And this Ether 2O is also used in products to give a salty scent. And meat-like aromas. Now, now, let me say this. Why are people doing this? Why, why are these biotechnology companies doing this? Why are these chemists? Why are these doctors these scientists, why are they approving all this? Why is the FDA, the USDA, why do they approve all of these things that they know are going to keep? Why do they put them in all of these products? Because they know you're going to keep eating it. Because they know that you don't have the will to say, you know what? No, I'm not going to do it. They know that. And here's the let's let's get to the effects, because I want you to I want you to be equipped and understand what's happening, what's going on. And if you listen, they're already talking about bringing masks back. They're already talking about shutting down and having another shutdown. And do you know why there are going to be many people that that are going to get sick? Because. I would say because of willpower, because they refuse to make the choice to eat healthy. To eat healthy. To cleanse themselves, to have a to have a strong gut, <laughs> gut health. That, that's gonna watch this. That's gonna produce, that's gonna produce the red and white blood cell. I'm gonna get into it. So here's the effects. Here's the effects on us when we eat all these foods and snacks and chips and all of that crap. Here, here it is. When you don't drink, watch this, when you don't drink your, your vegetables, when you don't drink your, your fruit and you, you buy your fruit juices that have all of these additives and preservatives, and some of them include ether 2O. Look at the effect on us. Ether 2O is known to damage red blood cells. And bone marrow. Do you know how important your red blood cells and bone marrow are? Which can cause anemia. If, you're da if you have damaged red blood cells and bone marrow, you're going to have anemia. Now, we're going to get into what happens when you have anemia. It could damage your red blood cells. Do you know what red blood cells do in your body, in my body? They carry oxygen to your lungs. If your red blood cells are damaged, you're more susceptible to have asthma, COPD, inflamed um, um, alveoli, which causes you to be short of breath, which causes you not to be able to participate in ministry which causes you not to be able to seek ye first the kingdom of Yah and all his righteousness, which allows you not to be able to go to somebody and, and lift them up in prayer because you're coughing all over the place. It's because of diet. 
Do you know what bone marrow does? Now, your bone marrow could be damaged because of all these foods that you're eating. All of this stuff that, you know, I wouldn't even consider it food. Honestly, food just shouldn't hurt you. Food should help. Food should help you become more intelligent instead of helping us to become hurt and harmed. Your bone marrow, it produces the red blood cells. And so if you're producing red blood cells, but you're, you're damaging them because of your diet, now you all messed up. You don't know why you're getting sick. You don't know why you're out of breath. Bone marrow, watch this. Your bone marrow produces red blood cells that carry oxygen. And watch this. It, your bone marrow also produces white blood cells that do what? That fight off infections. Every other week, every other month, you coming up sick. You got an infection. What's going on? Diet. It's straight up diet. And I guarantee you it's not the fruit, it's not the vegetables that's causing that. You know what's causing that? That chicken. Yep. It's the chicken. It's the beef. It's all of that stuff. All the animal products that you eat is causing you to be sick. And you can't do ministry like you want. Your business is not functioning like you want. You know why? Because the foods you eat, watch this, they not only affect your, your systems, but they also affect brain function as well. Let's keep going. Cause I want to get to, I want to get to, and I need to shut down in a minute, but it also watch this, this ether two O, which is found in fruit based food or fruit based foods and beverages that are packaged and that are highly, um, Processed like desserts, fruit jams, yogurts, all of this crap, all of this stuff that I'm just learning that I wish I'd have known 20, 30 years ago. But because now I know better, I'm doing better now. You know what else it does? It damages your liver and your kidney and your upper respiratory tract system and your reproductive system. And it causes heart attacks. You know why? Because the red blood cells are not getting enough oxygen throughout your body and your heart begins to pump more and more and you have a heart attack. You may say, I'm fine, Pastor. Well, you don't know. We don't know what's going on inside of our body, especially when we're eating all this processed stuff that we were not originally designed to eat. You know what else? Not just your, your heart, not just heart attacks, but your stomach. You got stomach problems all the time because your small intestines are inflamed. In your large intestines, the dual denim is inflamed, and you have um, acid reflux because the because the the cardiac sphincter is not closing. It's allowing all of that acid from the meats that we're eating to come up and and burn our tissue in our throat and our and it feels like heartburn, but it's burning the tissue in your esophagus. You you know what else is damaged? Your pancreas. Do you know what the pancreas is used for? The pancreas releases insulin. And, and, and watch this. It releases insulin from the islands of, of Langerheim's. And but, but when your pancreas is damaged, your body doesn't get the natural sugars that it needs. That's diabetes. One and two. Your spleen, the spleen, now watch this. Your spleen controls the level of white and red blood cells that goes throughout your body. Now, if your spleen is damaged, and then watch this, your red blood cells are damaged, you don't have a fighting chance against germs, infections that can get into your blood and my blood. Because the spleen helps to filter the blood out. That's infected that has germs in it and removing watch this your spleen also helps to remove old and damaged red blood cells which causes cancer now you know the remedy to that 
look at this. Animal flesh. If your diet is mostly animal flesh, animal flesh decreases the spleen's ability to filter out all of the dead blood, red blood cells and cancer causing cells. It decreases it. How can you know this? Now you may say, well, Pastor Andrew, we don't know that. Go look it up. It's, it's out there. It's listen. <laughs> it's a, listen, how can you say, how can you say, I want you to, I want you to, I want you to really think about this. Knowing that all the damage that animal flesh can do to you, how can you say I'm struggling with not eating it? I mean, knowing the damage that it's going to do to you. And then watch this. The doctors know. And you know what they do? They don't, they don't, they don't give you a, a way to be cured from that. They manage it by giving you uh, petroleum-filled medications. I want to say this when I close. Fruit can, can watch this, can heal all of that. Oh, yes, it can. You know why? Because that is what our designer designed for us to eat. That was the original diet, our daily, everyday diet was for us to eat fruit. Now, you, listen, the feast days, they don't come up every day. So look, we can throw that out. Look, don't, don't even try to use feast days one time a year. That was not, the feast days were not the original regular diet of the Israelites. No, it wasn't. Were there times that they ate meat? Absolutely. But they're not eating it like we're eating it. And also the meat that they ate is not the same meat that we're eating today. So we can listen. So we all agree on that. We all agree on that. So what's the problem? The problem is we're addicted. She on there now, Brandy. We are addicted to food that is no longer healthy for us. We're addicted to it. And see, watch this. When you try to, have you ever tried to reason with a dope fiend? Have you ever, I'm serious. <clears throat> Growing up, we had at least five to six dope fiends on our block. They weren't trying to hear nothing we were saying. I had homeboys that I went to school with. When we graduated, they was on the block walking up and down. Broke my heart. You can't reason with a dope fiend. And studies show that the foods that we eat and the way that they're developing these foods today with the different additives and preservatives, with salt, fat, and these sugars, these synthetic sugars, they got us hooked. They got us hooked. And watch this. It's worse than being on heroin. It's worse than being on Oxycontin. It's worse because we got to eat every day. So we got to make better choices. And this is why we got to make better choices. Because I don't want to get caught up. <clears throat> I don't want to get caught up in the foolishness and the hurtful lusts of these corrupt doctors and medicine men who don't care about you, they don't care about me, but they care about being rich. So I want to I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage we 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 got to do better. We got to do better because the will of Yah needs to be done in a healthy body. Not a sick, decrepit body that can barely move around because we're eating things that 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 give us heart attack, heart disease, uh, dysfunctional kidneys. 
I don't want to get caught up in that foolishness. Listen, I live most of my life in that foolishness. Mm -mm. I'm going to be content with having healthy food that Yah created for us to eat as our original diet. Am I going to celebrate the feast days? Absolutely. We're celebrating it right now. Am I going to eat a uh, lamb on um, uh, Passover? Absolutely. Absolutely. Once a year, I may have a little bite. I'm going to have a little bit. Yeah. But you ain't going to see me at no fast food. You ain't going to see me making hamburgers. You ain't going to see me making a breast, uh, chicken breast, no chicken thigh, none of that. Because I know what's happening in, I know what's happening with what they're doing to the, the food. And we can't afford to get caught up in the foolishness and the hurtful lusts of these medicine men. Blessings. Blessings, everyone. Any questions? Any questions? Any uh concerns? Any, any uh comments? Blessings, thank you for watching. Those of you who are on Facebook, blessings and shalom to you. Shalom, Pastor Vince.